this is this this is Australian internet, mate. Welcome to episode 16 of the Cathode Ray podcast. This is version two because I am in northern New South Wales and our internet is fucking terrible, mate. But again, anyone in Australia is used to this. So I'm here in uh, Vala Beach. Uh, it's halfway between Sydney and Brisbane. It's beautiful. We've got a bit of bush over there. Uh, then the water is right over the other side. Uh, I literally woke up to a kangaroo five meters away th- uh, this morning at 7 a.m. Just grazing, just hanging out, you know, kookaburra flies. Very Australian. But we're here to talk about retro games, and I've got my good friend Steve Nutter. How you doing, Steve? Hey, I'm doing good, Lewis, man. That's awesome. I'm seeing some great wildlife like that. I love that. That's uh, really cool. I've seen some kangaroos in the zoos, but never. Yeah, that's awesome to see what out in the wild. It's really nice. They're all around this area here. Uh, and uh, we went to a wildlife park called Oakvale and we saw koalas. We pet the koala. You don't see many koalas in the wild. They're actually quite endangered these days. So it'll be a very rare thing to see a koala in the wild. But we were lucky enough to, to see one uh, in, in the actual wildlife park and give it a bit of a pet. Because even if you see one, they're up in the tree usually. And you wouldn't want to touch one in the wild anyway. You want to leave it alone. You certainly <laughs> can't get too close to the kangaroos. They'll take off. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're doing good. Um, yeah, so to get into this week, we've been traveling around. And uh, I haven't done a lot of retro stuff as I hear I'm on holiday uh, enjoying the weather. But I was, I was going to just talk about, I, I did speak to my friend Jay. Jay, the network cabler, who I spoke about in a previous episode That's of right. Stories when we lived together. So Jay was telling me a few things. First of all, he's um, one of the things he does is install fiber optic cable. That's his specialty. And there's two big power stations up here that are a few kilometers apart. And they're installing redundant links between the two of them. And there's long underground cable uh, tunnels that he's like, he showed me pictures. They're literally in knee high water. Uh, and he's pulling cable. Like that's how they get it. He's literally, as a guy, pulls cable off a spool and walks a few kilometers with it. Uh, between the two stations so they're installing fiber optic links there and the other thing he was telling me about which i thought was very he does a lot of work with cctv and installing them and uh, i guess i won't say the name but there's a big chain of entertainment venues here uh, across uh, australia and he installs it for them and what the cctv can do is quite amazing the first thing is uh, it can auto detect if you're not wearing a mask so across anything and it'll fire an alert to alert some operator, okay, this guy hasn't got a mask, and that means someone on the ground has to go and excuse me, sir, put the put the mask on. We don't we uh, <laughs> we've dropped the mask mandate, but you know when that happened because we have very strict restrict very severe restrictions in Australia. And the other thing I thought was very yeah. interesting oh, yeah. because because this is a uh, chain of entertainment venues. What they can do is he could holy shit a kookaburra just landed here um what he could do (laughs) what they could do is click on anyone's face so they see someone right they click on the face yeah and the system will tell you wherever else that person has been not only in the venue but across all of their venues so it's that good to just be like you don't have to know who they are who is that person man that's crazy and also for example you kicked out of one club you're not going to get them all night they just yeah they'll know everything And they're going to scan you on the way in. So it's probably quite discreet, but no doubt there's a bloke going, yep, you're good. Yep, because the system is auto-matching it. And um, it sounds intense, but I mean, not, you know, too, sound, sounds, I don't know. It sounds like what would happen these days, even though it does sound f- pretty full did they on. Even, so very did they, stories. I mean, are they like using it now or has it just kind of been abandoned there? No, that's, that's, well, the mask thing is one feature of the system, but this ability to track uh-huh. faces and to track people, this is absolutely something they're oh, using every day. Oh, I'm sure they're day. always going to be doing that. Yeah. Right. So they're definitely you will say be, it's I mean, at least everywhere, a, just about. If Yobbos get kicked out for doing some drunken stuff, it's going to track them and not let them back in. But no doubt, I don't know, who knows what else, maybe someone's committing a crime. Well, you, I mean, they could, yeah, if you're doing anything bad. Anything. Right. So that was very interesting to hear his stories. Because uh, he told me so the last he runs was, fiber optics. Yeah, fiber optics. Can, is you should have got him to. You should have got him to brought some fiber optic to you and <laughs> yeah. helped you out there at your bungalow. It but is. We need yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah, that's because a big yeah, part I've been of um, on fiber optics. It's a good. That's good stuff. If you can get now, on you've there. got. Does that mean you've got fiber to your house or fiber to a local node around yeah. you? To no, the house. it's to the house. It's actually, wow. yeah, they, they bring it. I, I mean, I watched them bring it from a pole, you know, to the house. So it's not very far, but they have it all, the infrastructure around here already. So, 
That's it's, great, uh, man, that they do it that. It was not like, very much. Yeah, they did that. And then, yeah, they've it's plugged up into a corner of the house where my chimney is. There's like a big router there that huh. gets all that signal. Was it, as you said, it wasn't expensive for that installation? Is Like, is that normal? Is that the norm? No, actually. For people in your neighborhood? Well, see, this is, uh, since they're trying to grow or something, they mm-hmm. have no installation fees right now. Wow. So you get them and they bring all this stuff for free. And then, I mean, it's it's not very expensive. And then there's a super fast option that is expensive, like two or three hundred bucks a month. If you want to spend that, you can have like three gigabytes or something mm. up or down. I don't know, but um, huh. it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good, pretty reliable. But yeah, that's it's it's interesting because it's just yeah, it's nothing. And and well, they did the same thing. See, at my house that I left. Um, Tennessee and they did the same thing where they had AT&T came in and ran fiber in the whole neighborhood and if you were willing to get on with them early um, they would basically waive all the installation fees and it was a guy taking it from basic you know a power pole and they'd run a fiber cable down to your house uh, either and that one was buried okay not not very deep but it was buried sure but still because one of the things, Australia has uh, their national broadband network called the NBN, which uh, every, any Australian we know is a bit of a joke and a bit of a farce. And it was originally sold to us all as fiber to the door for everybody. And then they did the sums later on as everything came out, like that was not going to work in this great wide brown nation of ours. So uh, most, as I understand here, most people in Australia right now have fiber to the node, which means to the street pole or something at the end of the street. And then it's copper, some sort of ADSL copper solution from that. And that's what's restricting most people here. You can specifically pay to get fiber from the node to your house. But I, I heard anything from hundreds to a couple of thousands quoted, depending on your area. So we're still a little, still a little backward here. But um, we're, not, I'm on, we're on the 4G I link bet, here. Yeah, even. I bet the... Go ahead. Yeah, I bet, the, uh, I bet it costs a lot to get that cable run you know i mean if you they're, they're eating a lot of cost here i bet yeah okay and what and i was gonna say america is a big in, nation as know. well america is a, a, a wide nation so what do you think is is i mean there's a lot of stuff to cable in america as well why are they doing it? is it competition is that why it was so cheap for you yeah well that's one thing and it's um i'm not sure i think that it's i think that once they've already got everything see i live in an area where the houses are kind of close i mean it's an older neighborhood mm. and it's um you know it, the the it, they're on the street already and it was literally mm, you know they don't even have to bury it at this house cuz there's a street okay. coming straight from over from the pole above mm. the ground so they just came out and attached to it so it's pretty easy um but then, like, my dad lives in a, a suburban neighborhood, you know, kind of out a little bit outside of the city limit, but still in the same address city. But he can't get it. They won't even come to him because mm-hmm. they don't – like, that's what their game is, is if they can't get to you, they can't get to you. But right now they just wanted um, – I don't know. They just, I, I mean, it, it it's just a newer company that I've never had anywhere else. It's, like, local, more local – but uh, they're good now. Maybe they'll suck in a couple of years <laughs> if they get really big, like all the rest of them do. Sure, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> right now, they've been all right. They've I've had customer service. They've done good with it. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's a lot faster because yeah, my dad is always complaining about his internet and and not being able to get this because he lives out um, in a much nicer neighborhood, but it's outside of their range. So it's just one of those weird. It is things. the way it goes. You can't you can't say. So I've heard a few fr- stories of because uh, I, I studied computer science and I was catching up with a few friends of mine and they're successful entrepreneurs and a lot of it, I've heard at least two of them uh, they got multiple fiber links into their house and they're just running their servers and they're essentially their own little ISP from their home. So if you're but they're paying thousands a month but they're running successful businesses off them so on the other hand i guess you know if you got the money to burn then things are not too bad but i mean i guess i don't know yeah how it is everywhere if you got the money to burn things can be yeah it's all part of that stuff right Mm. yeah so what have you been working on so tell me in the retro world because i've been off the planet mate well yeah i've been working on a few things i was trying to keep uh keep up with stuff and i was laughing that 
maybe the only way I keep myself accountable anymore is by uh, posting either what I do good or what I screw up on on Twitter. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I'm like, I've got to fix this so I can at least put some more updates and hopefully not have to say I just gave up on something. <laughs> but one of those things I recently worked on was the uh, the Nintendo GameCube uh, digital AV mod that was made by Dan Kuntz at uh, Citrus you know, 3000 PSI, who's, he's working on that really awesome looking new switch right mm. now. But he, uh, at some point made, you know, this, this modification for a GameCube. Cause I had, the only one I had here was one of the second later run. It was a silver one that didn't have the, uh, you know, it only the had digital the port. composite mm. and S video. Yeah. It didn't have, mm. yeah, sorry. It says this digital mod needed to be added. And years ago, when I went to visit my friend Matt at Insurrection Industries, he's the one who makes those cables. Mm. He was making the um, the component cable for a GameCube, and he had a prototype that was all done, or it was like a, a, one of the first couple runs. It worked perfect. Uh, it worked perfectly. But he's like, here, man, take this. And I've never been able to use it because I've never had a GameCube. <laughs> and I mean, it's been like four years since I've had this thing. And... Um, so I was like, oh, I've got to get this kit. The kit went on sale on Castlemania Games for 30 bucks, and I was like, I'm buying it. I'm That's just going right. to try it. That's good. And I got in there. And, but this is – it's funny because it's been, it's been a little bit since I've modified a console. So I get in there, and I'm laughing because I'm watching these installation videos. You have to have a pretty good set of tools to be able to do this mod. You have to have a Dremel so mm -hmm. you can cut the metal shielding up. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. – um, I knew, like, my granddad has a thousand tools in this house, so I knew that he somewhere had a metal file, like, to file the metal after you cut it so it doesn't oh, yeah. cut anything. It's not sharp. So I, I went through all the toolboxes, and I found one of those in, like, the fifth toolbox I searched. And uh, so I got all that part done, and I was like, well, that's a pretty good amount of work. And uh, then I started working on desoldering the old um, – because you have to remove the current – Huh. input on the back where you get composite in S video. You have to remove that and then exchange it with this other Does it uh, disable so it's, uh, ports. it's disabling uh composite So yeah, it fully disables it. Port? It gets okay. yeah, it gets rid of it. Like you're hmm. getting rid of that port. You're just basically swapping the port. Wow. So anyway, I was I was doing this. I take this off and it's a desoldering and it, the part that's not hard is when you're not you're desoldering the pins. That's really easy with the gun, but I got a little bit, you know, I don't know, like I was pushing on it a little bit hard on one of the edges that has the big fins with like ground plating around the edges that is bigger that's held in. Mm -hmm. And my iron slipped and I nailed this component that was like right next to it. It just disappeared. Like <laughs> it was so tiny and it just it hit it. And I and it, and it just went flying like and I and I was like look, I was like crawling on the ground trying to find it and I mean I'm like grabbing specks of dirt like no that's not it it's so tiny and I was just laughing saying oh my goodness I did this so I start freaking out and I'm like ah oh, somebody help me what is this thing and uh, and I'm 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 researching I'm like oh wait this this probably is it's under the chip you know I'm realizing that I'm gonna be tagging into this video chip to get the digital bo board with a, a ribbon cable anyway mm. so i was like oh well it's 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 not actually going to be an important part it's something that has to do with probably filtering going into the end of the old uh you know video the composite board, video or, yeah but it's port. not used anymore sure yes it's no it's not not used anymore so anyway i did the rest of the mod i put it in there i did, thought it did pretty good because i haven't done a ribbon cable in years and mm. like that tiny you know soldering and you like drag soldering across stuff. it was so a bit I did of that, all that. It? yeah drag soldered it drag soldered it and uh had a ton of flux all over it you know and uh cleaned it a lot and so it looked really good but i, I kind of uh, i was I, so i put it all back together and of course it just didn't do anything i mean it powered on but no video signal and it was real late at night and i was like oh this screw this thing i you know i'm done i'm like this is I'm, so i was real frustrated because i was like this is the dumbest mod i spent 30 bucks to get like <laughs> it, and it's the most difficult mod and you can go buy like a gamecube for like 60 bucks still so it's not it wasn't it was like i was just getting frustrated mm. but then i woke up this morning and um i sent a picture i posted a follow-up actually i started looking at the picture that i posted of, of my work 
and I realized one of the spots on the end looked like the pad was gone on uh, on the board, and I went back and I, uh, I took the thing apart, the console apart, and I took my meter, put it on continuity, and sure enough, there wasn't continuity, so it had no pad that wasn't getting the data, and uh, everything else had continuity. So I just put a uh, you know a jumper wire, a tiny, tiny, tiniest jumper wire in there and jumped from that spot over to the uh, ribbon cable and it worked perfectly after that and so that was fun that is, um, that is a, a big yeah so like what's a, the um uh, what's the output is it a mini hdmi is that the is it a hdmi out of that mini hdmi no no so it's got an actual proprietary cable part for that you remember we're mm. talking about this how the gamecube cable is a proprietary cable and even though there's replacements made for it it's uh it's still really expensive if you find like the OEM one. And so the plug is it's not so, a HDMI, um, but, it's, it's it's replicating the original digital port of the the GC. Yeah, oh. yeah, and and it's uh, so you have that, and then you have a uh, little you know whatever three point five millimeter TRSS jack for audio that you can yeah. that's in there that's connected to it because there's no audio in the uh, original. <laughs> So what? Oh, that's right. The original you had to use the cube. other one to to get the audio out. So, so what's the? Um, so this, yeah. So what do so you now? What, this GameCube. Sorry, I'm uh, saying oh, so, I was going sorry. cable, but you're saying you're using the Insurrection Industries component cable that you had yeah. from y years ago. Uh, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. So now it goes component out of it, and it can go. Um, you know, a lot of those can go 480p. So they mm -hmm. look really good on those 480p multi-format CRT monitors. Like I've got, and then um, there's one really cool thing. If you get into like the, I've got a copy of F Zero, uh, the GameCube game mm -hmm. on one, and you can do a widescreen version of 480p, and it's not, it's scaled properly, mm -hmm. so it's not, it's 16 by nine and 480p, but it's not like just stretched. It's actually scaled properly, so it looks really good if you just have, you know. Proper widescreen coming out of it. That's I great, that. man. Is that a yeah. video? Are we seeing? Are we going to see this soon on a video? You reckon? I don't know. You know, it was funny. I wasn't thinking about it. I, I probably should because it's been so weird. Um, another thing that happened was like when uh, after all that, I got that done literally this morning and got it working, and I was letting mm -hmm. it run, and I was like, I'm going to take a break and go out and just run around town, and I was going to Goodwills just because I was like, I haven't been in a week or two. I'm going to go see what's going on and i stopped by the first goodwill and uh i'm just looking around and i go in and i see some great stuff which i'll show you too but no joke within like five minutes i look over on a shelf and i found this and i almost fell over laughing which was <laughs> <laughs> a uh, replacement nintendo gamecube and it's the one that has the both inputs so yep. see that's the input that you that's replace the... in this mm -hmm. input with so like you just swap those and then you have to i had to drill a hole to add the other one i don't have that console out here but yeah this was here right <laughs> and so i was like awesome i'm just grabbing that and i picked it up and the first thing i did was i hit the open button on there and i look inside and it's got luigi's mansion in there wow. so like a, a really a plus game right so i'm like awesome yes and it has it's eight dollars and they just put it out there because it's got today's date on it. I bet, yeah. On okay, the tag. Yeah. It's literally been sitting there for minutes, so, and, I bet. Oh, and it and it has an OEM uh, memory card. Oh, nice. But that's, that's it. Work. Yeah, that's but that's it. Like, there's nothing else with it. I was searching everywhere. No cables, no controllers, no other okay. signs of anything. And then there was a big... Um, I've been looking for a decent old school tuner, like for AV, uh, for FM radio. So I found another one of those. But then I also found there was a triangle setup of old uh, LCDs, which now nice. I feel like the LCD maniac. Is that the Dell? So I picked Beautiful. up another Dell, and it's a it's a four by three one, so it can go with the. Uh, Whenever I do something with the widescreen one that I got, I was like, I've got this one now too to go with it. That's it. And that, that was five dollars. Will that swivel? No, no, that's unfortunately not a swivel, and it only has. Um, VGA input, but I figured I would have some use for it for five dollars. I was like, "What's it? It's I'll a rental fee. Some. I can just buy it and then send it back if I don't want it to." Yeah. Um, 
Actually, um, you know what? That that <laughs> reminds me of what happened. Things, yeah. Your monitor reminds me of what happened yesterday. I forgot. I was in a uh, in Coffs Harbour here. That I went to a pawn shop, and uh, there was a. Uh, you walk in, and there was a gentleman, older gentleman there, and he and he he looks at me, and he points to an LCD monitor, a four by three LCD monitor they've got there in the pawn shop, and he's just a customer, and I'm just a customer, and he says, "Excuse me, mate, do you do you know if this uh, if you can play the games on this?" <laughs> And I, a big smile came across my face and I said, oh, let me help. You've come to the right person, mate. So I said, what, what, games, what games do you want to play? And he said, oh, the PlayStation, the, the, the PlayStation 3. And I went, oh. And uh, actually, I had a look at it and it was, it's a, an LCD 4x3. Now, in fairness to this monitor, it did actually accept S-Video and Composite. But the Composite was only over BNC. So I looked at this old bloke and okay. I said, mate, uh, look, it will work, but not. you'll need another plug, the BNC to RCA adapter. And I looked at him, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to explain to you where to get one, and especially <laughs> around here in the countryside. So I said, <laughs> but also, um, the thing was $60. I said, mate, this is Woo. a rip-off. You know, I was like, mate, yeah. just go get a crappy old TV. And he's like, oh, thanks a lot. He's like, you look like you knew what you were doing. And I'm like, do I have a Super Mario t-shirt or something? <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, it made, made my day to help this old bloke randomly in the store and tell him, nah, it's a rip-off, mate. You don't want that the pawn one. Pawn shop so. guys were ba- <laughs> you were making the pawn shop guys mad, weren't he's you? He's fuming yeah, at the back. good. Yeah, well, that's funny because when – so so here's the funnier part too. I, I had these three items, big electronics items in my hands. And I'm going to pay out. Mm. And at the register, there's a guy that's, I mean, he's similar in age to uh, um, me or, you know, maybe a couple years younger. Sure. And I put down the LCD monitor and I put down the uh, stereo and then I put down the GameCube. He doesn't say anything about the other two things. He's, oh, you found a GameCube. <laughs> and he got like this nervous look on his face, perked up. And he's, oh, it also has a memory card. And then he started getting like worried. And then he opens the tray and he goes, oh, and there's a game in it, and it's Luigi's. Uh, and he's like, oh, they're supposed to take these discs out. And I just, like, I don't say anything, right? I always learn that if you just stand there and play stupid, that they – because I don't know whether he's wanting me to say, like, oh, that's not supposed to be in there, and we'll take it out and yeah, you know, like do something else with it. I wasn't going to say that. Of course not. I was like, that comes with it. And uh, so – he was like looking at it and he pulls a disc out and he's like, Oh, it's not in that great condition. Like try to discourage it. Feel, no self, joke. Feel I'm like just standing there. Yeah. And I'm like, he's like, Oh my gosh, they're not supposed to send these out like this anymore. And then he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. he's saying something on his breath. Like I work with freaking idiots. And I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? And so I'm like, uh, all right, I'll take him." And, uh, he's like, let me put that GameCube in a bag for you. So he puts it in a bag, and then he's like, as I'm walking out, he takes, he hands it to me, and he says, "The laser, you know, those lasers go bad. It's probably does that probably doesn't work on it anyway." And like trying to like just just like grab on my parade, and what a dork! So I went home and literally poked them both in since I already had everything set up yeah. from the test I was running, and it works perfectly, both the game and the uh, the GameCube and the memory card. So. Eat that, uh, you know. Tremendous. I wonder what that case thing is. I mean, you're a Goodwill employee. Now, no well, offense here, to Goodwill so, employees. I hear you're doing good work, but what's his incentive? I don't know what his personal – see, I feel like this guy was on the inside. So I've heard this, like, you go in – see, I go in there so many times, and this is a new one. I've been going there for six months now because that's how long I've lived here now. Mm. So I'll just go in there. And there'll be like old timers in there and old timers, just an old man, like a really old man, you know, and he's just like standing there. He'll be talking to somebody that he knows from in town in the Goodwill and he'll be like, yeah. And I'll just be sitting there next to him and he'll be like, yeah, you know that they have, uh, they take all the good stuff and they, they take it home themselves and then they sell it on the internet. And I'm just like, yeah, sure. You know, you just say that. And then, uh. But then, like, another guy, when I posted the thing that I had bought this on Twitter, he po- he said that he had gotten, um, he had read that Goodwill was changing their policy that all the video games were supposed to be either, if they were going to be sold in-store, they were going to be based on the price charting 
thing mm, or okay. um, they all needed to be sent to the e-commerce site because they were making so much money off that mm. that they wanted to sell them all online for the high prices and they finally caught up to that but uh, that was just funny because he was super he was super pissed maybe that's it okay it. so he like, was hoping to push it on ebay or something right he takes it well or he was hoping to find it and take it to his like manager and be like look what i found here take this uh, and put it online and thought it would get him some brownie points you know i don't know so it's annoying as a uh as or a yeah you're it's annoying but game. you can understand i mean if if goodwill is a for-profit business that is eventually gonna happen they are eventually no. gonna that's they're not but they're not for profit that's the worst part about it Ooh. that's the biggest part about it okay. they're where, where actually the, a charity well okay maybe and they I mean, get still all their inventory they get all their inventory for free it's driven you drive up and you anybody just donates their stuff to a local goodwill well i guess they're still incentivized to get the highest price possible if they're for charity well sure well, well, whoever well, amazing money they, for no they see yeah this is like one of those Look, I hear you. There's a customer, I hear you. Great. No, I mean, it's like a great thing because Goodwill signed up as a charity, but there's not really... The, the only thing they do ch that's charitable is not... It's not It's not like... Um, it's kind of a It's kind of a gray area they're oh, playing in. Oh, it doesn't but work they, like they that. Get, so. so they get all... Well, but they used to... And it used to be, you know, they were doing exactly what you're saying, and they would just price everything at a certain price. But then now they've gotten kind of greedy where they're literally getting... It's like you're getting stuff for free, and then, I mean, I understand exactly what you're saying. When you start at putting, the, it's just they started putting more of a business aspect to it, mm. to go along with that, and um, I guess see, the they do actually yeah. make money for an owner. Like they're actually owned by groups, the actual mm. business, and wow. so they get a they get like a, a chunk of money from the business operations. Okay, well that's a bit rough. Yeah, where so does this money not, go? Where is it? Is it, so, so it's, go, right. it's not going if, to help a program. There is a certain amount of money that's going into some no, guys. No, they they do it. All they do is like say they're hiring and doing job training, and then they usually hire people that are kind of unhirable. Like, okay. I mean, not unhirable, but they're um, there. There's only a certain limited jobs that disadvantaged uh, people in society, which again is good. There. So yes, sure, like doing exactly, some good, which is very good. Absolutely, good yeah. And they've done, they've always done that like really well. They've had a lot of people that. Um, you know, otherwise have hard time finding jobs. Have been able to find a good job there, but that's about that's about it. I mean, they don't really do anything else for. Okay, I um, guess the other side stuff, of that is yeah, we don't need to. <laughs> you're saying that um, you know they've they've cottoned on or they've got a they have now understood the price of these things. I guess the difficulty is in a lot of cases if goodwill doesn't mark up the price some other bloke's going to come along buy it for five bucks and then flip it on ebay anyway so you know how many of these are just yeah, genuinely that, ending up in collector's hands yeah that's that's what has happened a lot of places or it's just like me where i go get it and i mean most of the stuff i don't sell so sure. but but it does end up here but that's mm -hmm. um but it still makes you see that stuff can still fall through the cracks either way yeah. that even there's going to always be something, and it's always going to be, you know, as we keep going, it's going to be something. It's not going to be the obvious stuff that's going to be showing mm -hmm. up probably as much anymore, you know? It's going to be going weirder to be things stuff. that people don't know. Because if you look, like some people probably could look at that and not think it's anything, right? From the outside, no. just this. What is Could that? think it's, I don't know. I mean, if you've never seen one of these, you just think it's some kind of toy. I don't know. Actually, while we're on but, this on this topic of secondhand prices, um, I wanted to. I've recently got a switch, and I know in Europe, and I have also now seen here in Australia, the prices of switch games are really holding their value. Uh, I mean, I understand if you go to the store, we've got a chain here, EB Games. They're a chain of video game stores. And even you want to buy Mario Kart yeah. 8, it's still all, like five bucks less than full price for a, a secondhand copy. And I've been unable to find almost any Switch games below, I want to say, 40 bucks Australian. Usually it's 50. So you see that price staying high. And I, I wonder when does the market turn? Because Switch is the highest selling console of this generation. No, Okay, so no doubt still in demand. I understand we're in a demand phase for Switch. But there's going to have to be at some stage a tipping point where that flood of 
of games is going to hit the market and those prices are going to go down because they're still stupidly high right now. How do you see Switch game prices in America? So Switch game prices in America are kind of the same the mm. same way, exactly the same. There will be uh, I mean, a lot of these titles. There's you know Nintendo's doing a really good job of just extending the life of these games because they're you know uh, adding new content that's downloadable that's like an expansion to Mario Kart or Mario uh, you know Party or something or sure, the DLC any of those coming, games yeah. that they've done that yeah the DLCs but not even just that you'll look at a game like um, uh, the uh, Zelda games on there and stuff and um, those I haven't played them but I've got a copy my kid's got a bunch a bunch of Switch games that because that's what he was one of the ones that got it in our or the first one to get it in our family and uh, yeah I was always just surprised because you would go in there and and it, and a lot of times you go try to get a used copy and it wouldn't even have the case like for some reason they threw away the case and it's just the disc and it's like five or ten dollars less than retail. Yeah. So at that point, I'd rather just pay for a new one. But exactly, there it's you know it's always it's always kind of like um, they don't. Sometimes the stock will be low on them, and uh, it'll be hard to get them. And uh, the but yeah, most of the time they stay up there on those prices. I think it'll okay. stay that way till 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 the next kind of generation thing comes along for whatever nintendo wants to do and i don't think that they're in any hurry to get to the next thing that the switch you know because if you think about it look at how much effort it's taken for like xbox and uh sony to try to get in back to can maintain their spots and it's th there's consoles they have no they have no availability almost right i feel like uh um, so nintendo's I guess still doing I good I'm not, um, there's certainly no science here, but I just feel like these Switch games are holding their higher value longer than other games in the, the previous generation. I feel like I've seen PS4 drop. You can get plenty of deals on PS4. Pl I mean, plenty of reasonable deals on Xbox One. Uh, not the new series, not PS5, of course. And maybe that is triggered because, uh, as we know, Nintendo don't drop the price on first-party games. You want an original copy of Mario Kart 8. Uh, what is that launch title? I think it was a, or Breath of the Wild launch titles. Yeah, They're I mean, those still are really early titles. 80 bucks. There's still five, whatever it is. We just had the fourth, fifth birthday, whatever it was. So maybe that is, yeah, is part of the triggering keeping those prices high. But then clearly collectors at home are not liquidating their uh, collections on mass. There's not people putting Switch titles on mass onto the market right now. I hope I hope that day comes. Yeah, I wouldn't that's mind a few definitely. Cheap ones. Yeah, right. That would be awesome because, like you say, if that ever happens, it will be something that um, I'll start well, like, buying them a lot more. But you, like you mm. say, you don't. You never run into anywhere. Uh, well, I don't go. To, uh, there's not a lot of big gaming stores. Actually, it's sad. I tried to max my son and I tried to go last week to a gaming store that we went to a couple months ago, and they were shut down out of business mm -hmm. since uh last two or three months oh, so um there's not you know you go in those places and they already are not around as much anymore and it's uh the hidden factor in this as well is it's the, expensive the the thing that might give us an indication of the market is i, I was uh watching one of kid shoruken's videos jim in tokyo uh, and I think from what I've understood briefly from Jim is that the Japanese prices are already, they're always at the front wave of, let's say, of these trends. And they're starting to dip already. There's a, a very healthy secondhand market in Japan with hard off uh, home off stores and, and the secondhand, these large chains of secondhand stores. And I think from what I'm hearing there, because the Switch has been so, I think, even more popular in Japan, just unbelievable there that they're a little bit ahead of the game and they're already starting to see that dip happen over there because Japanese people, I think, are a little bit more... Um, they are, I would say, a little bit more mm, eager or acceptable to liquidate and sell their stuff back. There's a lot of secondhand stuff on the market here. Anyone who's been to Japan knows what that's like, a hard-off store full of stuff, bigger than more stuff than we have anywhere here in the West, America, Australia, or anything. So I'm sort of holding my fingers, crossing my fingers, both that that trend comes here and then maybe I can get over to Japan. Japan might be the place to pick up those Switch deals right now. Yeah, yeah, that would be the place to be. But there's also, um, 
I think that maybe there will, you know, if there's if there's good things that happen because we had the like the Steam Deck, you know, are you familiar with that oh, device yeah. mm-hmm. was was released? So it's it's come out now and it's had its first run. Now, sure, that's going to have a bunch of issues as any new product would, I'm sure, with the very first launching of it. And but that has a potential then to, you know get people off the switch right and then like there are people that have been on the switch now for like you say five years and they're going to be ready to move to something else and when they do that that's when they tend to let go of that prior collection Mm. so we may be coming up to a point where that happens and i think that it again i feel like that nintendo gets to capitalize off the problems that the other two companies have had with being able to stock a ps5 or a xbox because there's but there's always still a switch there like you yeah somehow and then well okay we can't get it but we can get a switch and we can get and if you get a switch then you're going to get those first party titles that are great i mean they're great games a lot of fun but yeah they are the same game that came out with you know a year of two of the game of the device usually sure so okay maybe switch maybe steam deck will uh change the game a little bit there i mean maybe I don't know Nintendo's finances. Maybe after the Wii U, they need to replenish the war chest a little bit. Uh, I'm always a little bit skeptical. I've no, been I'm sure the war more. chest has been replenished. Yeah, true. I'm always a little skeptical. They From the, put the, the switch has been so good. In. Yeah. I just hope they don't put microtransactions yeah. in. Let me just buy a game. Let me buy it from me. I'll give you a bit more money, but I don't <laughs> like microtransactions. I think that's a lot of the reason, too, that people are hanging on to the switch the switch their switch games because a lot of gamers that are like us they're like this might be the last generation we get any kind of physical media with our game and we want to hang on to it right we don't want to let it go because like you say the e i mean we all know the wii u shop and uh, all these other nintendo shops are going down soon and there just won't be support for that stuff except there will be the outside support of the community but nothing from official sure I saw uh, here in uh, a JB Hi-Fi in a secondhand uh, at the secondhand section of a, a JB Hi-Fi store. They had the Psycho uh, shooting All Stars, the Alpha and the Beta one, which is the shoot 'em ups. And I know how expensive mm-hmm. shmups are on almost any platform these days. And even though I mean I already have all those games, if you go across Mister, uh, I probably got most of those anyway. And so I don't need to i don't need them on the switch they probably even got more lag on the switch than they do on the mister anyway and they're 80 bucks a copy uh and i was but i just know that shmups they will go up in value absolutely those limited run shmups will always and i was sitting there going do i spend 160 bucks i know it's good i know it's not going to go down in value i don't really need to play it but oh and i'm like no, this is not a financial advice channel. Uh, I'll just walk away and <laughs> save my money. But And I know in a few years that'll probably be worth yeah. a few hundred and I'll be like, why well, didn't I? But yeah, it's probably a better place. But I was, oh, I saw it in the wild. And just some things you just know, okay, that's going up in value. That's going to be more expensive. Well, there's a, mm. a hardcore shmups scene that will always be around. You know, it's like the fight game community. Yep. and shmups community it's their own communities so there's always collectors in there that are that are big high rollers too and they'll um you know there's a lot of exclusive stuff in there and then you cross over into like the neo geo people and that's you know that's like watching those things even from a distance and and even just entry level games that have gone and you know they triple in value and and it costs so much just to even get a mm. decent uh, shmups or anything on like a Neo Geo hardware, uh, even the MVS machines anymore, because everybody. Do you have hardware in that in your big red machine? Do you have original hardware still hanging around? I, I have, I have. Uh, it's removed. It's in my shop. I have it. Okay. Folded up. It's got an issue with it where like a RAM chip finally went bad in it because it did. It has a four slot that was oh, in there, cool. and it was. Uh, it, it, so it's big and it's but it's it's in rough shape kind of now um it didn't have anything really blow up on it but there was like three or four jumpers installed on it when i got it and it was in an arcade so it was uh it came with the machine according to all the paperwork and stuff inside so it's original uh but okay. i've just kept it cuz i thought i thought that i might eventually work on it and you know just keep it with it in case i ever moved the mister 
you know, eventually I'd love to move the Mister to something that has more buttons, right? I mean, because uh, four, four I'm not the adding AGM? more buttons to my cabinet. Yeah, there's only four on the MVS okay. and your directional pad, and so it's not you can't use you know you can't get take advantage unfortunately of all those really cool other fighting games and stuff that have six and mm -hmm. uh, plus buttons, you know. Okay. So okay. So there's so a hope for the, the yeah. Definitely don't that. cut it. I think everyone can agree on that one. No need to. To cut oh, extra no, holes no, in the I'm cabinet. not doing anything like that. <laughs> so what you're telling no, me is there's a really no good reason there's... for you to buy another cabinet. So, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your wife agrees that you need another cabinet for the oh, extra Oh, I'm always buttons, looking yeah. if the price is right. <laughs> sure. How you doing there? You got to should we wrap That's up soon? I know you've got to run off with the family and do some things. Yeah, we probably should. That'd be good. Yeah, I know it's uh, this is a little shorter than normal, but I think that. Um, we got to talk about some cool stuff, and then we'll get back to our normal schedule here soon. Yeah, we're working soon on it. I won't have a chance to record <laughs> probably for another week. I'm in transit from here to Sydney, then Sydney for a couple of days, then it's transit back to uh, all the way back to Estonia, and then I've got a, a job the, the day straight the day after part of me so it's probably going to be not until next Wednesday so we're going to probably put this one out as ASAP and you're going to be jet lagged oh buddy I'm going to be all over the place I'm going to be on planet <laughs> earth but it doesn't matter I'll, well they uh, yeah, they pay you for work I'm happy to work this, this Australia holiday didn't come for free so <laughs> time to go yeah. back to work when I'm at home <laughs> Yeah. All good. So, all right, mate. Good. Well, it's been nice to catch up. Nice to have a quick talk with you. Uh, thank you, yeah, everyone, for enjoying too. our stories. And, and uh, we're, we're, it's so nice when you, you leave comments and you, you tell us, uh, you know, if you are in our niche, we understand this will never be the most popular podcast in the world. Because, But if you're in our niche, then we appreciate you uh, being into our stories. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, Steve. Sounds have a good, good day. Yeah. We'll talk to you we soon. Really thank do. you much, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. Okay, hit stop now.